Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium for an underrated matchup. It's the Bridgewater Random Trojans and the Brockton Boxers. Both teams coming off of overtime games against the Brighton Bengals. BR lost their matchup in OT, and Brockton won. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Nubi Ratto. Nubi, you know a lot about the Brighton Bengals. Tell us about what that matchup means to these two teams going up against each other. Well, huge. I mean, it tells you that both teams, I mean, they played them both competitively, so, um, you know, they've had a tough schedule here at BR. They played Boston Tech. They lost against them um, over in the, the holiday tournament they had over in Bridgewater. So they've had a tough schedule themselves. Boston Tech's rated top 25 in, in, in the state as well as Brighton. So, you know, they're in the place in Brockton right now, which is ranked number two, I believe, in the state. So definitely, you know, they face their competition. So I, I think BR season, they're ready to go. And Brockton can't take them lightly. And this is a good test for the Brockton boxers. You can talk about cross time rivalry between football and basketball, these both teams going at it. It's going to be an intense game. Everyone's fired up. Crowd's pumped up. So it's good atmosphere, good playoff test like atmosphere for the Brockton boxers. Well, we are in the second quarter of action. Apologies for technical difficulties. Bridgewater Random is wearing their away red jerseys, navy blue and white trim. Brockton in their home whites with red trim around the black numbers. There was an absence in the last game for Brockton. It was a sizable absence. The 6'7 junior Eldon Terry missed that game against the Bengals. He returns for the boxers tonight. Box, I definitely like how they played last game. They're intense and ferocious on defense that they are right now. Marcel Louis Charles coming up with the steal for Brockton. Handing off to Jose Montero Jr. down low for Tejon Glendardi. And he is able to put the short floater up and in. Nice job by him right there. What I suggest is, you know, put it right back up. He put the ball back down, but he's so tall and big, doesn't matter. But face a bigger team, put it right back up. Nice shot right there by Darius. It is 25 to 19, the boxers on top of the Trojans. Jose Montero Jr. over to Navon Reed. I tell you, this kid Navon is going to be an absolute baller. I mean, freshman starting for the team. Um, this guy's going to be an absolute machine. And a charge called against Louis Charles, so it'll go back the other way. You know, while we're chance, I want to give a shout out to uh, the athletic director here. I walked in here, a lot of impressive things. You walk in here, you see a foyer with a whole bunch of uh, trophies that kind of sets the standard. Hey, we're here in Brockton. See the trophies, see the accomplishments right here in the foyer. I'm seeing the nice uh, you know, LCD TVs when you walk into either side of the entrance. And now there's a PA announcer that announces, you know, the calls and the names and substitutions and so forth. So kudos to uh, the AD. Just doing a fantastic job, I think, kind of turning around um, and, and, and putting a little spike to this athletic program. Of course, the PA announcer is Jason Tassinari. Oh, I mean, the, the one and only. Of course, the husband of longtime Lady Boxer soccer coach, Andrea Tassinari, who is here tonight with Olivia, their two-year-old daughter. How awesome was that, raising a banner here uh, a few weeks ago? Wasn't that really cool? Wild. That was great. I tell you what, Broughton's, I, I call Broughton the Boston Celtics of high school sports. I mean, just look around the banners, you know, uh, we, we, we don't hang up division titles here. We, we hang up championships. Something we noticed uh, one of the few away games we cover, the Oliver Ames tournament. Every time they win the division, the Hockamock League, yeah. they hang a banner. Yeah. If we did and that, there'd be no space here. wallpaper. Motion. Looks like wallpaper. Hockamock League champions. Hockamock League every single year in we're, some sport. Yeah, we're about, we're about one thing here. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. It's 27-19, Brockton over Bridgewater Raynham. Yeah, a few people walking in right now, they're surprised how, um, how early the game, the game actually started earlier than seven. Washington, Washington. So it's number three, Connor Rubenskis. Now Glenn Darty comes up with the ball, Marcus Azor. Way downtown for Darius, no good. BR with the uncontested rebound. 
Wow, what 11 a move. goes flying in. What a move. Darius hipper like coast to coast, weaving down the lane, soaring like an eagle. I believe I can fly and touch the sky. Azor is fouled. Tell you what, man, it's going to be back on the mic here. Uh, want, you know, uh, definitely going to see Brockton High basketball. I had a chance last few months to be covering Lynn Tech basketball, by the way. Shout out to Lynn Tech. They're doing fantastic. All four teams, St. Mary's, Classical, and English, and Tech. Um, but none like being back home in Brockton. Okay, Lola to Darius, corner three, no good. We are able to grab the rebound out of Glendardi's hands. Oak and Lola called for the hold. Man, I'll tell you one thing I really like about this Brought to Box team this year. Um, I mean, they have height. I mean, even their smallest guys, um, you know, are, are, are pretty big. I mean, you have, you, of course, you got your point guard, number 13, you know, is probably your, your shortest player, um, Harris. But other than that, I mean, this is a pretty stacked team. I had a chance to see a lot of these players during the Boys and Girls Club Summer Hoop League. Um, so, you know, they're playing year round, uh, they're playing with each other. So the chemistry, I saw, I saw Navon, this guy was just an absolute, I mean, offensive pellet during that Summer Hoop League. Um, so, very excited to see him play in, in the Boston box Boston uniform. Of course, Jerees Harris, the sharpshooter. Every year we try to give out a few nicknames to the, the players on the team. He has well earned his Jerees the Assassin Harris. And there's one from the corner. I'll tell you what, can I give him another name? The Laser. He's his laser beam just on target. No cute stuff, right to the lane, shoots it to the basket, great job. 29-23 after that three-pointer by Harris, Brockton on top by six, about four and a half to go in the second quarter. A one-touch pass from Harris to Reed, and Reed's pass intercepted by the Trojans. This is now number 43, Tony Fernandez. A well-seasoned Bridgewater Random roster. There are no sophomores, no freshmen. Right, uh, this is definitely a, a team to be reckoned with. Wow, what a great job on defense blocking the base. Up. A better job on offense stepping back with the fadeaway jump shot. Easy, Tiger. Easy, Tiger. Okay, Lolo over to Marcus Azor. Now, Reed from the corner is going to be called for the travel. Number 35, Anthony Dobeeb coming into the game, the junior forward. Jalen Lee also in for the boxers. Lee definitely one of the underrated members of the Brockton boxers. He's got quite the three-point shot and defensive prowess. There's Harris coming up with the loose ball. His pass to Navon Reed. Over to Azor, Azor to the corner for Lee. Lee to Harris. Azor drawing the foul. Great ball rotation right there. I mean, they brought the box, very unselfish on offense, moving the basketball, finding the open man, great job going to the basket, penetration, and uh, it looks like he'll be at the free throw line. No, they're calling it on the floor, not during the act of shooting, which I disagree with. Look kind of, oh wow, that's blasphemy. Doesn't matter, Lee, three, a little bit too long. And a jump ball called. Fernandez was in there fighting with Lee for it. Harris flipping it in for Reed. His no look pass intercepted by the Trojans. And now a one, two is good for Doug Alves. Good offense right there. Nice little jump shot from the elbow. 29-27, BR within one possession. Azor with it, trying to extend the boxer lead. Now Harris to Lee. Lee hard over for Navon Reed, driving baseline. And it's gonna be an offensive foul against Navon Reed. Out of control right there, going to the basket. 
just kind of threw his body up there. Good job by BR drawing the charge. Navon Reed, the brother of uh, Bubba Shelby, one of the fantastic brought the box of receivers, played over at AIC and um, had, had a cup of coffee playing some pro football uh, overseas. So definitely uh, coming from a, a very athletic background. Come on, Tony. Reed comes out in favor of Eldon Terry as BR tries to get that jack, get that jack. grab the lead, not successful. Jalen Lee counted and won. Good job right there by the brought the box pushing the basketball. Nice, aggressive move to the basket. Doing a good job with body control, going to the hoop and creating the foul. Jalen Lee trying to make it three points. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching on, in the stands. See someone with the Philadelphia Eagles jersey on. What a confused fan. Not even the right conference. What a confused fan. 32. Go Patriots. Pump up the volume. The NFL. Just on a side note, sent out a, a tweet in a Facebook post today that said, congratulations, your team is going to the Super Bowl. Azor up and off the glass, and then that brings us to 34-27. Boxers up by seven. And it's a picture of Tom Brady and Case Keenum. Ouch. And it said, congratulations, your team is headed to the Super Bowl. You can, too, enter this sweepstakes. So everybody's crying a foul that the conference championship games are rigged and that the Patriots and the Vikings are going to play in the Super Bowl. You know, you know the irony about that, I'll, I'll explain it next, next dead ball about Minnesota if they make it to the Super Bowl. Wow, what a basket. Here we go, Sonny Oak and Lola driving inside, making no mistake, putting the boxers up by nine with 1.40 to go in the second quarter. There you go, big boy. Alves, three, good. Oh, right down the pipe, cold-blooded. Azor to Harris, and BR comes away with it. Now it's Elves Oh, again. you gotta go to the basket on that one. You can't go out to the three-point line. He had a wide open layup. That was a lollipop. Lee, Harris, layup, fouled in the air. I'll be at the line what, for two. I'll tell you what, Matt, this is Steph Curry generation right there. You had a wide open layup. He took the basketball, went back to the three-point line and reset the offense to half court. Then they shot a three, top of the key, and missed it. You can't do that. You had an easy two points right there, served up on a poop poop ladder. And the rebound came straight back to the top of the key. If Tony Fernandez had followed his shot, he would have had an uncontested rebound. <sighs> so anywho, so I'm hearing if the Vikings make the Super Bowl, they're going to lose a lot of money. Because in theory, you get a Super Bowl, you, you got teams that, and fans that travel, hotel money and so forth. If I'm a Minnesota Viking fan, I'm not getting a hotel. I'm sitting in my house. Long three is good for number one, Jaden Rosario. So the conspiracy machine is they want, um, they want the, uh, the Eagles to win. It's 38 to 33, five point edge for the boxers. Harris is good for three, 41-33. So the interesting thing is, you know, if you're a Minnesota Viking fan, you want to talk about tourist money and hotel money, they're no longer going to get them because they're home fans. So it's not necessarily the game itself. It's everything around it. For all you naysayers out there. The Minnesota economy. The Minnesota economy is going to struggle. The game will be fine. Oak and Lola to Azor. Azor driving inside off the glass, no good, but he's fouled in the air. I tell you what, someone who's so small and, and slender like him, going to the basket, he has no fear. No fear going to the basket. He could throw it down a few times. You've seen that during the tournament. He's six foot, but it's a powerful six foot. It's a powerful six foot, and to be quite frank with you, he plays on a Division three team, he's probably a center or forward. I mean, that's how big this team is. Just final note on the Super Bowl. The NFL breathing a sigh of relief when Philadelphia won last week because they've got so much construction to do. They get a satellite press box to build at Minnesota's home field. They get all these stages to build, and they can't do that while Minnesota's playing at home. Right. 
Well, they got two weeks. I like that they, they can get it done in two weeks. We got big problems. Rosario off the glass and in. I tell you, this team got a lot of fight in them. Got a lot of fight. A's are unable to get a shot up before the buzzer. It's halftime, it's 41 to 35. The boxers up by six over the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Newbie, what did you see in the first half? We got ourselves a ball game, butter boy! Shabba shabba woo! Tell you what, great game. Great game, I'm all fired up. I think Bridgewater's coming in here, they're not scared of Brock. You get a lot of teams that come in here and timid, they're scared. If the game's over for them before the game even starts. Bridgewater says, hey, listen, we're here. You know, we face some of the top teams in the state. You face some of the top teams in the state. We're one of the top teams in the state. Let, let, let's have a mega match, and that's the score right there. They're down by six. I'm excited. Get your popcorn out. Because I'm ready for the second half. 41 to 35. Boxers over the Trojans at halftime. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Birdman, Birdman. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Bridgewater Random Trojans and the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Newbie Ratto. Newbie, it was quite an interesting half. BR hitting a bucket right off the bat here. It's a full-point ball game. What a hook shot right there by uh, one of the BR players. Jabbar, Jabbar. There's a swat for Jalen Lee. No soup for you. Long two, no good off the front of the rim. And Lee grabbing the rebound, gets tangled within three Trojans. Abu Kaba coming up with the loose ball. Kaba all the way in off the glass, and good. Forty-three, thirty-seven, six point lead for the Boxers. PR can't forget to go to the basket. That's what kind of got them in this game. Oh, what a move right there. Kaba untouched on the finger roll, and I'm, it is good. I mean, it was untouched because he was so go, slippery go, going go. down the lane. I mean, great job moving his body to get to the hoop. Number 21 for the Trojans, Sam Brown. This one tipped by Lee, Kaba comes up with it, back to Lee. Off the glass, no good, Azor in the right place at the right time and his layup is good. I'll tell you what, I'm a great job but it brought the box on. Trojans and offense right there, everyone running, some again the offensive board. This is Brown. Number three, no good for three. Brought down by number 11, Darius Hippolyte. His good shot no good. Oak and Lola with the rebound this time. Good job boxing out right there. Harris, three, no good. Kava coming down with the rebound, trying to force it inside for Azor. And now the Trojans are in alone. A layup for number 43, Tony Fernandez is good. And head coach Bob Bowen is calling for a travel on that play. Yeah, you're not going to get a travel on that car right there. Stop and pop. Jalen Lee is good for two. 49-39, 10 point edge for the boxers. And right back the other way, Doug Alves for three. Big three right there. Cuts this to a single digit game. That's a big three. BR oh, wow. he now working the press. Okamola. Thinking shot, instead gives it down to Lee, his three way too long. Brought down by number 11, Darius Hippolyte. Brown, foul, counted in one for Sam Brown. I tell you, both of these teams are real fundamentally sound. I mean, they're passing the ball real well on offense. Found the open person being very, very unselfish. Um, good job on both teams offensively. I mean, that was good basketball right there. Good ball rotation. 49 to 44, make it 45, a four point ball game, Brockton on top. Hustle 
Azor off the inbounds pass from Harris. And out of play off of BR. Brockton retains possession, 18 on the shot clock. Harris into Abu Kaba. Kaba now to Azor, back to Kaba. Harris, corner three, it's good. A big, old, big three right there, stops a 6-0 run by, by Bridgewater Raynham. Every time Brockton tries to pull away, BR comes right back. Good job by the Brockton Bucks, it's talking right there on defense. Alves three, in and out. Good job. Ferguson back to Alves, another three, this one's good. Oh, wow. And BR is going to call a timeout. Halfway through the third quarter, it's 52 to 48, a four point lead for the Boxers. They were up by 10 at one point in the second half. It will be BR is clawing their way back in. I'll tell you what, I mean, not necessarily clawing their way back in, but they're not, they, Brockton just can't kick them out the door. I mean, I'll tell you what, this team right here just continues to fight. Crucial point, Boxers up by 10 points. Big three right there by BR, cut, cuts it down to seven. Then a three point play, cut it down to six. They're right back in the ball game, down by four right now. So, you know, they're just trying to keep the game close going to the fourth quarter. Keep the game close, keep the game close, and make the move. So, they brought the boxes right now. They got to put a little separation um, with themselves the next four minutes going to the fourth quarter. But kudos to uh, BR. Great job on the offense, moving the basketball, um, being very unselfish. Halfway through the third quarter. Brockton over the Trojans by four. Newbie have had a question that I've wanted to ask you all, all week. Fire away. Sixers and the Celtics going back and forth all season. Sixers getting the better of the last matchup. Do you consider them a better rivalry this year than Celtics-Lakers? That's a very good question. Um, probably, probably, probably this season. But I think by next year, when La when Lakers get LeBron, that'll, that'll be all different. Harris for three from the corner. You can tell that's his favorite spot on the floor. The assassin with four tonight from that same spot, 55 to 48. So you've already got your mind made up. LeBron to the Lakers. Oh, Lebronzo. LeBron and, 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 and Lonzo. And they're going to call, what's this card? I think it was a, sh a foul before the shot. Offensive foul, looks like. He's going to hit somebody. And, and, and the coaches are not happy with that call at all. I didn't get quite, I didn't get a good look at it, to be quite frank with you. This one out of play off of Connor Rubenskis. What a time for basketball in general. You've got Joel Embiid finally healthy, leading the process, as everyone's calling it, in Philadelphia. You've got the Celtics that looks like their rebuild is finally coming to an end. Oh, their rebuild is finally, I mean, it's, they, they really rebuilt for, honestly, one year. I mean, they missed the playoffs for one year after the Pierce Garnett Allen era. It was one season, and they were right back in the playoffs. It wasn't much of a rebuild. It was more of a transition that caught a rebound. Azor hit in the face. Take the basket. Travel. Jalen Lee, rainbow three, no good. Glenn Darty grabbing the rebound. And another foul call. This one's going to go against Tony Fernandez, called for another push. Montero is going to come back into the game, replacing the banged up Marcus Azor. It finally looks like parity is a thing in the NBA. Yeah, other than Golden State. It's Golden State, then very parity. <laughs> yeah, so you, so, you got, so you got Golden State, and then you got the B level clubs Houston, San Antonio. I always put OKC up there because they always turn it on late in the year. But I never got Philadelphia Services trust the process. What is that? Stink for four years and then hope you get good for the last year? I mean, they've been awful for four years. That's not a good process. 
I tell you what, you know what process I like? The Hippolyte process. It's an express process. It's a three-point express process. And it's a good one. Oh! A block called. That's going to go against Sam Brown. So I'm very excited about this uh, this year for high school basketball. We've got a lot of teams, um, powerhouses, I think, that are, 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 are uh, coming back to fruition. I think Brock is a powerhouse this year, I like to say. Um, Lynn English in the North Shore is very powerful again. Great to see. Brighton obviously is a powerhouse, and, and Lynn Classical, and, and BR, and, and Needham. Needham ranked number one in the state out of nowhere. Right. Elves three, good. Oh, wow. Ice water in his veins. How could you be so heartless? How could you be so heartless? Elves got it again. He's looking for the three ball, loses it to Louis Charles. Three on two. Louis Charles tripped up. Will be. You got to give that up. It's a three on two. You had the big man trailing. You got to feed the big man and go to the basket. 57, 54, boxes up by three. You got to do better than that. He walked into it. High school basketball, you mentioned Brighton. Both of these teams, their last matchup against the Bengals. They had a South Shore swing. Bridgewater Random on Martin Luther King Day. Losing in overtime. I mean, back-to-back -back overtime games for the Bengals. That's tough. And Brockton, 86-81 victory here at Staff Gymnasium on Tuesday night. The Bengals have quite the interesting roster, newbie. Every single member is a senior, save for one kid. And one kid's a junior, so they're going to lose the entire team to graduation this year. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, you know, but um, I, I definitely think they do a good job pulling talent. Uh, so they may not be as powerful as they were this year. I mean, damn, they lost a lot of players last year. First of all, congratulations to Ty. Uh, I'm thinking I was last name. last name is Perry. Um, Calls it the St. Bonaventure. So kudos to him. So 60-54 brought the box right there. I mean, I tell you what, I like the way BR's playing. They are not intimidated. They're coming here. They're balling today. They are playing some ball. Al's the sharpshooter and holy savior for the Trojans. Has a couple of three balls. This one. Goes loose and Montero Jr. is in alone. His one-handed slam. Throw it down. Throw it down, big man. Throw it down with time, please. Okay. 62-54. 60 ticks to go in the third quarter. Doug Alves to number 32, Chris Barry. That's defense right there. When Darty thinking dunk, he slows up. He's going to be called for the travel. Yeah, too busy trying to get cute with the dunk rather than putting the ball up and getting the easy two points. Heads up! Heads up! Sixteen second difference between shot clock and game clock. Brockton relentless defense. Hippolyte from the charity stripe, no good. Abu Kaba on contested rebound. And now with five second difference between the shot clock and game clock, the boxers are gonna waste out some time off of that. Uh oh, here we go, oh, all right. Are you good, everyone's good. Everyone's good, oh, Elves off right the there. grass and in, getting back inbounds. Can we give him newbie credit? That's hustle right there, he came in here, knocked us over, got slow. the ball back with a layup. Ain't no better than this. I love this game. Louis Charles, three, no good. Four yeah. seconds to go. Brockton with the rebound. It's loose on the floor. Nobody knows where it is. The buzzer sounds. Third quarter has come to an end. Doug Elves crashing into the commentator's table, landing in Newbie's Get lap, man, Newbie getting credit. back up, regaining composure, and a layup on the other side. Get it's 62. That man, Newbie credit. Get him Newbie credit immediately. It is 62 to 56. I don't care how you Brockton do it. On top. I don't care how you get it. I don't care where you get it. Get that man newbie credit.
what can one use newbie credits for? Can they use that on the uh, the newbie productions online store anything. to get some uh, some get, copies of? You can get anything with it. You can do anything with newbie credits. Newbie credit the new Bitcoin. Hey, it's bigger than that. It's bigger and better. Okay. Most valuable piece of credit on the face of the earth. It's huge. So here we go. Fourth quarter. Brockton We're in a fight right now. We're in a fight. Brockton going with their jumbo set to Jean Glendardi, Eldon Terry, both on the floor, 6'6 six, six and 6'7, six, respectively. Jose Montero Jr. You know, Matt, I keep telling you guys I'm retired. I'm not calling any more games. You guys need to stop calling me. I keep telling you guys I'm done. Well, every year there's one game that you always say you're I in. Say, I'm done. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on teaching, the documentaries. I'm not doing it no more. You guys keep pulling me back. Stand up. Stand low. Special circumstances tonight. Circumstances. Stay low, stay low. Shout out to Big Game Miles Jackson. Big Game Miles couldn't be with us. He's attending the wake of Pastor Campbell. Yes, and definitely my condolences to the family. Um, family definitely um, had a huge mark here in Brockton. Um, so uh, send my condolences to them and to the Harrington family. Um, and then honestly to the whole Brockton police force for, for, for losing so much. So a tough week here in Brockton in terms of uh, losing two great people. This is Alves with it now, 12 on the shot clock. Ferguson. Uh, spin around jumper, no good. Glendardi with the rebound. Now Montero behind the back. Yvonne Reed off the glass, no good. Loose on the floor. Brockton calling for a travel. They're not going to get it. Alves working against Glendardi. Out of play. Now just throwing it into the legs of Tejan. So BR retains possession. Reed coming down with it. Step in! Hey! Charles the jump off forced by Jaden Rosario. So the hot news in the professional sports world. Tom Brady, a mysterious hand injury. Nobody knows what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna Everyone's nervous. freaking out. He's wearing gloves to all his press conferences. Nobody can see his hand. There's a block by Tejon Glendardi. And poor Jaden Rosario, the little guy. Is on the receiving end of that nasty block. Get away from Oprah. Ah, get away from Oprah. So Drew Bledsoe was the starting quarterback the last time the Jags faced the, Pat the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. He's an honorary captain this time around for the Pats. Paul Mandeville, old enough to be at the game the last time the Jags made the AFC Championship yeah, the, game. The, is that the Mark Brunel era? And, uh... Wasn't, wasn't too happy with the uh, officiating. I'll tell you what, um, you can't have that. You can't have players talk to referees like that, period. You let Glenn the coach Dardy do that. saying, what kind of call was that? Yeah, you know, was three, you, good. You don't do that. You let the coach do the talking. So Drew Bledsoe tweeting out, if the Patriots need him in the AFC Championship game because of Brady's mysterious hand injury, Bledsoe says he knows the playbook, he'll be ready. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll be very mobile in the pocket. Three, no good. The BR bench was ready to explode. I know. Down in front. A couple of offensive boards over the back against Sonny Oak and Lola. Yeah, now it's time to get boxer tough. Okay, because right now they're being bullied right now by Bridgewater. They're just being tougher than them in the paint. You got to box out and be a little boxer tough right now. Lee Harrison, Louis Charles, Nivon Reed on the bench. My message to, to everybody out there, calm down. Brady's gonna be ready. He cut his hand slicing avocados or something. He'll be fine. Set him 
This is Rosario with it. Rosario over to Hippolyte. Hippolyte three is good. Yeah, that was one of those players I was going to say, don't settle for the three. Good job shooting the three right there. We're all was, tied up, 62 to 62. I'll tell you what, I, I, was, I just saw uh, Darius's face. That's the face of a winner right there. He wasn't even, he didn't crack a smile. He said, guys, why are we celebrating for? It's 524 left. The game's tied. We're not even winning yet. I'm not smiling to the clock, 0-0, zero, zero, and we're on top. Wow, I like his attitude, his intensity, intestinal fortitude. That's a winner. That's a champion. That's a baller. Little break in the action. We want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from Staff Gymnasium tonight at the helm. Our fearless leader, award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandeville. Had a great uh, conversation with the fellow award-winning director, Paul Mandeville, during halftime. It was award-winning director talk. And between the two of you, you got more trophies than the boxers do in the foyer out there. Uh, it's close. I won't say that much, though. Next to him, we got Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Yeah, yeah. Up top on camera, Rob Curry, Katia Andrad. And of course, you were listening to the sultry sounds of myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, and seven time award winning director and producer, Emmy nominated, Nubi Ratteau. We got to change that to Emmy Award winning soon. And in a few years, it'll happen. I'm Terry off, off the glass and in. Cameron won. The big man's fired up. All fired up, ready to go. Boxing tough. That's what I like to see. Mean in the pink. That is Fernandez's fourth personal foul. Next one, and he is done for the night. As Terry misses his lone free throw, brought down by Sam Brown. And a travel against Brown. Fernandez all fired up on the bench. He's not happy with his four personal fouls. Okay, Lola's got an interesting dribble motion there. It's almost a carry. It's almost a carry, but it's funny because he was driven the ball. He didn't expect him. He expected to have the wide open lane to the basket, then saw the kind of the seas parted, and like, whoa, this is too easy to be true. Montero Jr., whole head of steam, thinking one-handed dunk, he goes down hard. Yeah, rejected by the bottom of the rim right there. The that arch nemesis. Yeah, that might be on Shaq of the Fool. <laughs> the back of the rim says, no, get out of my house. Terro Jr. not afraid to throw the body around as we saw during football season. Man, what an athlete right there. I mean, well, I think the last quarterback to play basketball and football was Jesse was in there. It was back in uh, my glory days. 2006. First attempt. Got a little break in the action. Newbie, your picks for Sunday. Picks for Sunday, Patriots. In a close game, like nail biter. And then I uh, like the Vikings. I, I, I can't. Um, I mean, the momentum of that game. By the way, awesome game last week. Um, I, I think the Vikings are, are, are going to host, be the first team to host the Super Bowl. Let's go. 68 to 62. Glenn Darty is going to come back into the game, along with Abu Kaba. Brown rejected by Terry, but was fouled. Smart job by uh, BR going to the basket. They're in the penalty now, one-on-one -on -one situation. Check that, it's gonna be two free throws during the active shooting. Sixty-eight to sixty-two, four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Glendardi Kaba in. Sonny Oaken Lola and Eldon Terry will get a breather on the bench. Gotta make your free throws though. These are big. One of 
two is Sam Brown. Cava down low for Glenn Darty, who can't corral it out of bounds. Intercepted by Jalen Lee. Now Lee with a whole head of steam to the bucket and it's good. Coast to coast, right down Main Street. Great job being aggressive. They need a bucket right here, quick. Three, Hippolyte, no good. Brought down by the Trojans, loose on the floor. Excellent passing to get it to Rosario. And now a three for Hippolyte, no good. They gotta have the presence of mind. They're in the penalty. They're in the penalty. They go to the basket. They get any free throws. You gotta have the presence of mind. They can't just settle for the three-point shot. One-on-one -on -one situation. Tony Fernandez is going to come into the game for Rosario. With the night Fernandez has had, I believe he will be in the game for about a minute before he fouls out. He's got four personals. Next one he's done. Going on his first attempt is Sam Brown. See the jerseys. The jerseys are. It looks like they have a sponsored by Jordan, which is nice. See a Jordan logo on it. Lane violation and won't count. Lane violations on BR. It's big. Seventy to sixty-three. Three and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Abu Kaba in for Glenn Darty. Now getting it to Azor. Jalen Lee. Harris, deep three. No good. Kaba getting it and fouled on the way back up. That's just be more athletic right there because BR had good inside position to get the board, but he just jumped right over him and got the offensive board. Well, I was wrong. Fernandez has followed out of this game. He was in for 32 seconds before he followed out. So Fernandez done for the night. Rosario is gonna come back in. 70 to 63, Abu Kaba at the line for a couple of shots. Big crowd here for the basketball edition of the Cape Cod Bowl. And nobody has moved from their seats. This is this is great. This is this is a great atmosphere right here. I'll tell you what, I, I'm convinced there's no better seat than courtside at a basketball game. That's why we keep calling you. We know you really want to be courtside. I did, like, and that's why I keep saying yes. And I, did, I don't get it, Matt. You're in the penalty, and you're not going to the basket. I don't get it. Glenn Darty intercepted by Brown. Brown all the way in, blocked by Kaba, but a foul. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You go to the free throw line. All the oohs and eyes. that's nice. We, they go to the free throw line. I was going to say we. They go to the free throw line and get two free throws. Boxers trying to move to 11-0, undefeated on the year. The Trojans, if all holds true, will move to 5-5. Five five. The Boxers win. They have clinched a berth in the MIAA tournament. Can I ask you a question? A trivia question, man. When was the last Brockton boxer team to go undefeated during a regular season? What year was that? I want to say... Oh, 09. You are correct, 2009. Counted in one for the Mad Dog. Yep, that was with Lewis Moss, Gerard Devon, Rondell Bess, uh, Henry Vargas, rest in peace. A lot, a lot, a lot of stars on that team. Funky Cole on that team? Yes, he was. Funky Cole Medina. Yep, I mean, that team was stacked. What a fun team to watch. They actually had some talks about um, maybe doing a small little documentary on that team. Uh, it's, we, it's almost going to be 10 years. 
Azor grabbing the loose ball, putting it up and in. 73-64, nine point edge for the boxers. Two minutes to go. Two minutes left, so they need stops and buckets. Stops and buckets. Had Jerese Harris on during one of the girls' games when the boys weren't playing. Trying to set up a three-point contest between Jerese and his mother. And Mrs. Harris, the record holder for the most three-pointers in a game at Massasoit Community College. Family of assassins. Kaba, no good. Brought down uncontested by Sam Brown. Harris to Azor, watch out. A one-handed slam, oh, he missed it. Marcus Azor trying to bring the crowd to their feet. He's got a couple of dunks already on the year. And missing that one, Hippolyte for three, no good. Nubi, I think he got something to say about the missed opportunity for the boxers. Yeah, and I don't get, I don't get why they're shooting threes. Matt, can you answer? I'm gonna go crazy. Why they're shooting threes when they're in the penalty? I mean, I'm going bonkers. If big game Miles Jackson were here, he would say you gotta hit the easy meatball. Azor went big. He went for the one-handed dunk, missed it, could have had a layup. The six-footer could not get up high enough. Bucket go, go, go. here clinches the game right here. Boxing the bucket right here. I'll clinch the game. That'll be the dagger. There's a seven-point lead for the boxers. Azor to the bucket. Off the glass. Counted and one for Marcus Azor. Redemption. Redemption. A man always seeks redemption. And Azar seeks redemption to the bucket. Nine point edge for the boxers. Azar looking to make it double digits. Bird man, the fans Bird on man. their feet. It's a 10 point edge. What a move by Marcus Azor. Bird man, Bird man. And he man. comes up with the steal. Little Bird man, little Bird man. Jabu Kaba now. BR calling for the foul. They instead come up with a steal. And now a foul is going to be a push called against Glenn Darty. That puts the Trojans in a double bonus. 48.6 seconds to go. the line is Connor Rubenskis. Short two, no good. Glenn Darty with the rebound. Loose ball. Still loose. Now Hebelite comes up with the rebound. Rosario, three, no good. Abu Kaba with the rebound. He's going to hold it. And BR trying to grab it. Alves with a hold on Tejan Glenn Darty, 76 to 67. The box is up by 9, 30.4 to go. Missing the free throw, BR with it. Floater no good. Cabo with the rebound, he's gonna hold it. And now a foul called against Rubenskis. So he ran into Azor with 19 seconds left. This one effectively over if you're BR newbie. You just gotta take the medicine. They're gonna be a problem in the playoffs. Um, they're gonna be a problem, this team plays tough. I, I think I will see him again. Uh, 
Isaiah so Resty in the game. They've had a tough schedule. They've had some tough teams. Um, I, we'll, 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 we'll see them back in the playoffs. Coach Bones all fired up. Oresti's in for Glenn Darty. Glenn Darty didn't come off the floor. Oh, man, I tell you, he's going to give him a heart attack. I swear, I mean, I mean. 12.2 to go. It's 78 to 67. What was he yelling for? I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it. What was he was yelling for Tejan Glendardi to get off the floor. That sounds very similar to the sentence, newbie, stop talking out of your you, you know what, as some people on the production crew thought Bone was I yelling. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now this one's not over yet. A nine point lead for the boxers, 12 seconds left. BR calling a timeout. BR's got right where they want him here. <laughs> so they're gonna try to devise up their nine point play. So Nubi, you picked the Pats. Who's got the NFC game? Well, I, I think I like Minnesota. I think Minnesota, I mean, j the motivation of hosting the Super Bowl, I think that's what came over. I mean, plus that, the... the uh, Minnesota just the, miracle. Just, the, yeah, the motivation of that game. I mean, really one of the best football games I've seen in a long time. You're talking about Sean Payton. He's got he's to settle down. Seconds before Stephon Diggs came up with that miracle reception. As time expired, he was mocking the Minnesota fans by doing the skull chant on the sideline. Ouch. I tell you what, I mean, I'm, I feel lucky. I've seen the Minnesota Miracle, and also seen the Music City Miracle. I remember watching the Music City Miracle against the Bills. I remember, like, it was yesterday. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Paul Mandeville, again, reminding us of his age saying he saw the miracle on ice hippolyte three is good and a quick timeout called by br 79 to 72 there is a whopping 3.3 seconds to go they don't play to the whistle here it's a miracle on ice 1980 this year the first go round since the 90s that no NHL players are participating in the Winter Olympics. Wow, that's, that stinks. Why is that? Because the people who make billions of dollars, the owners of the league, decided they didn't want to risk any of their players getting oh, injuries and they couldn't come to an agreement it's on insurance. It's years. Is the World Cup this year too? World Cup, I believe. Well, I know U.S. did not qualify. Italy didn't either. Victory, First time since I believe the victory, 80s victory. that Italy didn't qualify. Jaden, victory, Jaden, victory, Jaden, Jaden, victory. 1.4 seconds left. Rosario half-court shot off the glass. No good, 79 to 72 your final score. Newbie BR put up quite the fight, but the boxers move to 11 and 0. They are undefeated on the air. They put up a great fight. I thought, um, I thought this team played excellent and I think we're gonna see them again. I think we'll see them again in the playoffs. Um, I like this fight at this team, but they brought the boxers. Too good, too talented, great defense, um, great ball rotation. Just an all around excellent game. Two big wins, Brighton BR. Um, big momentum wins, continue the undefeated train. I like the way they brought the Bucks up playing. They're dangerous, they're scary, they're confident, and they're good. Newby, you've got one game ball to give out to each team. Who's got it? You know, I, I, I think the game ball for, um, for Bridgewater needs to go to Darius. I thought he played one hell of a game. For Brockton's tough, um, so I'm going to let you choose that one, Mad Dog. I'm going to give it to Glenn Darty, I know he had a bunch of I fouls, agree. but big man in the paint, holding it down, grabbing the big rebounds when he had to. 
79 to 72, your final score. The Boxers moving to 11 and 0 over the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. They slide to five and five. Broxers in action next week against the New Bedford Whalers. We'll have that one for you on Brockton Community Access. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Newby Rateau, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We'll see you next game. Birdman, Birdman.